220. So the question is, how can we achieve these, these goals now that we have set these goals? So one of the ways we can achieve goals is called backcasting. So I can turn off the light, please. Do you understand backcasting? Do you understand forecasting? Yes. What does forecast mean? Estimated about the future. The weather forecast. What's the weather forecast for tomorrow? Sunny. Estimation. Sunny, right? So backcasting is kind of like the opposite. So rather than forecasting or guessing what will happen in the year 2040 or 2050, one sets the target for the date and then analyzes the problem from the target back to the present, backwards in time, in order to chart a course between today and future goals. So backcasting is saying, how can we get from here to there? So we set a target like we want to reduce the global poverty by 2030 to just uh, less than one billion or less than half a billion people. And then we try to make a, a way to get there. So, uh, do you want to do backcasting in your life? Backcasting might be a good way also to do in your life. It means that you say, where do I want to be in 10 years or 20 years? If you do a job interview after you graduate, very often, or if you're looking for an internship, they'll ask you at the interview, what's your career goal? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in ten years? Can you answer the question? Discuss with your partner. <laughs> What's your career goal? Where do you want to be in five years, and ten years, and twenty years? Discuss with your partner. Now, let's try backcasting for your life as an example. So ask your partner, where do you want to be in five years, in ten years, in twenty years? Well, generally, what's your goal? You didn't think about this question before? First time? So what, where do you want to be? Where do you want to live? Do you want to be married? Where, what do you want to be doing? Yes. What do you want your job to be? They ask you in an interview, they're mainly going to be talking about your job, right? Your career. <laughs> After 10 years, still living with my parents, <laughs> eating ramen all day, maybe I'll play FIFA online all day in the FIFA bomb. PC bomb. After 20 years, still living with my, just my mother, maybe my father's not there anymore. Just going to the PC bong every day. 12 hours, eating noodles. Is that your plan? <laughs> Is that your goal for the future? They have some guys in Japan, they call them like some, there's some special name like recluse from society, right? They don't go out, they don't have any job, they just live at home with their parents and so on. Is that your goal? No? What's your goal then? 
think of something. You know, it doesn't have to be. I'm not. It doesn't have to be. Happen, right? Just what do you think, right? So if everybody has thought of their goal, now try backcasting. That means analyze the problem and make a course. How can you get there, right? So let's say that after 15 years, you want to be working in the global marketing, right? And you want to be in the mid-management position. Then how can you get there? What do you need to do? Now, there. Right, what's in the middle? So discuss with your partner. First of all, tell them where you want to be in 15 years, right? Then how are you going to get there? What do you need to do? What job do you want to have? China. <laughs> Chinese. Well, hmm? What job do you want to have in 15 years? Normal job in a company? That's very wide. Give me more specific. What area? Class needs to do some fantastic <laughs> exercise, right? Spend a long time. What about you, got girls here? What, where do you want to be in 15 years? I don't know. Hmm? Don't know? Why are you studying business studies, global business studies? Same, same. Just in Korea, a lot of people just want to join the company. Then the job company can decide what position you work in, right? What about you guys? Fifteen years. Mm -hmm. uh, first, um, either in marketing or in, and innovation, or in the HR department. What kind of marketing or HR job? Uh, Where do you want to work? In Europe. I what country? <laughs> what? I want to go back to Denmark. In Denmark? I want to work in global or international marketing field uh, as an export manager or in CSR department or in social media marketing in Denmark. Probably. Okay. So here we have, uh, fortunately I'm getting some links which is... Here is a woman who is working as a marketing executive in Denmark. Hopefully she doesn't watch the video. <laughs> I don't think she will. 
But anyway, this public information, she puts her profile on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can see what has she been doing? Her career, her skills, her languages, her education, right? So that's kind of backcasting. You want to be a marketing executive. So here's a marketing executive, right? Probably it will be more competitive for you guys. You might need to have more than what she has, right? It's always getting more competitive. But what does she have? She went to Copenhagen Business School. She got a master's in international business, right? She had a master's degree in international business from Copenhagen with an exchange in Singapore. She did an undergraduate degree in Copenhagen Business School. Education, experience, trainee in London office. She worked as an internship or trainee in a London office, right? Assistant in accounting. Then moved herself along, different jobs, right? And she's doing a good job. Then she gets a job as marketing executive. At least that's what she says on LinkedIn, right? We don't really know, but probably it's true, right? So that's back casting. You find a target, and then you make a plan. So if you see that she made that plan, you might say, oh, maybe it's a good idea to do a master's degree in international business then, if I want to work as a marketing executive. Okay, she did that. Or better way is talk to her. Send her a message and say, hey, I'm a student and I want to be a marketing executive. Can I talk to you? They live in your local town or something like that, right? Maybe they'll say, no, you're crazy, go away. <laughs> but maybe they'll say, yes, okay, I was once young like you, so I want to help you. If you get an internship in a company, you can talk to the people in the company. How did you get the job and what do you advise me to do? Right? But if you don't have a goal, it's not going to be easy. Okay? Like we said, JFK and uh, Julius, Julius, or uh, Gaius, Julius, <coughs> if you make a vision, then it's easier to achieve your vision, right? So, I advise you guys to make a vision about your future in 5 years, in 10 years, in 15 years, and then do some backcasting. Do you think backcasting is a good idea? Mm -hmm. Say what you want to be doing at this time, and then analyze how you can get there. Yes? If you don't know what you want to be doing, will you get there? Can you ever get to somewhere you don't know where it is? <laughs> no, right? It's not easy to get to somewhere you don't know where it is. But if you know where somewhere it is, then it's easier. So it's the same they use here. So they set the target, reduce the global poverty by 2030 to 1 billion people. So the next question they ask, what do we need to do? How much money do we need to spend this year, next year? Right? And so on. Do you have any question about backcasting? No. no. Uh, we also have technology road mapping. So, what does the policy terrain look like? What, do you understand terrain? Yes. Terrain is when you're climbing the mountain. If the terrain is difficult, it means it's hard to pass. There's a lot of rocks. If the terrain is nice, it's very flat and easy. So we use this phrase, what does the terrain look like? It means, is it hard in the future or easier? What are the big challenges? What are the technological barriers to overcome between now and 2030 or other future dates? So, technology is an important part these days of the world. So we have to make some technological plan too. So what is going to be the problem? What is the technological barrier we have to overcome? So maybe we want to improve the education in the, some country, but they don't have uh, internet access in so many cities. So we are clear we need to improve that kind of technology. So, for example, in some area like semiconductors there is an international meeting where leaders of the industry get together and they map out the steps to ensure that the technology is improving what do we need to do to keep improving the technology so in conclusion there's four main dimensions of sustainable development economic development social inclusion environmental sustainability and these require the underpinning of a fourth dimension, good governance.
Good governance is going to play a central role in the eventual success or failure of the SDGs. So do we have good leaders who can motivate people, carry them through to meet these goals, to make the laws, change regulations that's necessary, invest the money, give the money, and make those things become possible. So, do you have any quest question about this uh, part on CSR and sustainability in the course? No. no? So then, uh, let's move on to the uh, next part. So, <coughs> uh, the next part, we're also going to use an online course as a reference. We're studying global business ethics. So, we're going to study about globalization and MNCs. The course is Globalization, Age of Globalization from the University of Austin in Texas. This is another website. Coursera and edX are the two main websites in, in uh, the world for uh, <coughs> online education. So, you can also sign up to edX. It's very easy, edx.org. EDX is more, this is what's created by Harvard and MIT. Do you know Harvard and MIT? Yes. Yeah. They made this as a project. So you get a lot of courses from Harvard and MIT. Here we can see Harvard. And Coursera is more kind of global. It has courses from different universities all over the world. This one is a little bit more focused on the US. So uh, this course is called Age of Globalization. So just go to EDX, type in Age of Globalization. Enroll, sign up, and enroll on the course. Okay, this is uh, the instructor. So let's just have a look at the course, just so we can get an idea of what kind of things we'll be talking about. So, <coughs> justice. Hmm? Justice. How about it? Justice. Yes. Here. Harvard, you can take that course too. If you like. We we talked about it earlier in the course, right? When we're talking about developing our moral philosophy, if you take this course, you can develop your moral philosophy <laughs> during the summertime, right? Instead of going to the PC bomb, you can just or you can go to the PC bomb if you want. Maybe it's better go to the PC bomb, eat noodles, watch the course <laughs> on the, in the PC bomb. It has good like. Nobody bothers you, right? Mm -hmm. So, your mother might give you money. Right? How does she know you're not playing games though? That's the problem. <laughs> How does she know you're watching? Do you guys spend much time in the PC bomb? Yes. You do? Men? Green men? How many hours a week do you go spend in the PC bank? Six. Be honest. Hmm? Six hours. Six hours? Yeah. More than that? How many hours a week? <laughs> what about you guys? <laughs> Do you not understand the PC bank? Have you been to the PC bank? It's a PC room where they have very widescreen PC and <laughs> graphics and costs about 1 for one hour, right? 1 for one hour. Why is it better than to play at home? Why, why do you go to the PC bank? You can play game with friends. You can play game with friends there. Any other reason? Better, better graphics, better speed, better computers. The noodles taste better. <laughs> Does noodles taste better in the PC room? Not much, just a little bit. So here we can see the, what we are going to talk about. We have the three phases of globalization. <coughs> Transportation networks, media and the internet. Governance in the nation state. Capitalism and social justice regulation, and so on. So we'll talk about these topics under the heading of globalization and MNCs. So, first of all, discuss with your partner, what is your definition of globalization? So try to make some definition of globalization, and do you think globalization is positive or negative? So discuss with your partner. Thank you. 
So try to make a definition. If you want, you can check in the dictionary what is the definition of globalization. Try to make your definition of globalization, right? Then is it a positive or a negative thing overall? Why? Same way. Anything else? E. Jin Yong, what do you think globalization is? Countries share technology, they communicate by the internet. E. Chang Wei? Do you think, think that globalization is positive or negative? I think positive. Positive why? Um, I, uh, I think uh, to many countries, a uh, good thing mm. to uh, exp uh, export our country and uh, with the US how to, to win against North Korea. Okay, you say that countries can trade with each other. You know David Ricardo was a Portuguese econom economist and he said in Portugal they make wine, in England they make cheese, right? But in England they make wine but very badly. They don't have good grapes. They're not skilled at making wine. In Portugal they make cheese but the cheese is not good because it doesn't rain much so the grass is not green like in England. So isn't it better that England trades with Portugal? England can sell their cheese to Portugal. Portugal can sell their wine to England. Okay? So that was David Ricardo saying that uh, global trade is a positive thing, right? So let's make a list here. Positive things, you said cooperation for defense. Okay, what well, you said trade, like David Ricardo's theory. Right? What else is positive about globalization? The price for the customers. Competition. 
Okay, anything else? Uh, alternative choices for the customers. Choice, yes. Anything else? Communication is easier because of English. Okay. Anything else? Development. 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 You said, you said earlier we can share the technology, right? Mm -hmm. So we saw the head of the semiconductors were getting together to make some roadmap to help to improve the technology. Anything else? What about the exchange rate, like currency, like foreign currency? Is that positive or negative? Negative. Hmm? Mm. North Korea doesn't exchange its currency with anybody. Uh, Is that good or bad? Bad. Mm. Right? So we can trade 